Hey everybody, I'm Dan McClellan. I'm a scholar of the Bible and religion. The fit for this video is the amazing Spider-Man. Let's take a look at a video. You explain the specific prophecy in Isaiah that the Messiah would be nailed to a tree, crucified 600 years before the Romans, uh, at least 600 years before the Romans even invented crucifixion. There's no such verse in Isaiah. There are 17 occurrences of the word eighths, tree, in Isaiah. Not a single one of them has anything to do with anybody being nailed to a tree. In Deuteronomy 21, I think it's verse 22, we have the verbal root tala being used to refer to someone being hung on a tree, but that is almost certainly describing the suspension of a body or the parts of a body for display after death uh, by impalement or by hanging or by nailing or something like that. But it certainly doesn't talk about nailing anyone to a tree. That's not found in Deuteronomy or Isaiah or anywhere else that I can see. What is the prophecy? What's the verse? Uh, the exact verse, I don't know. I believe it's Isaiah 58. Someone here help me. But it talks about him specifically being nailed to a tree. It goes on to specifically say, not a bone of his body shall be broken. And by every gospel account, his bones were not broken. So that's also not anywhere in Isaiah. In John 19, it says this was done so that it would be fulfilled. That says, uh, not a bone of his will be broken. And that's probably Exodus 12:46, which is talking about the Passover lamb. But there is also a statement in, I think, Psalm 34 to uh, that effect as well. He won't break any of their bones or something like that. But this isn't occurring in any way, shape, or form with any reference to anybody being nailed to a tree, and certainly not in Isaiah. It gets very specific into the fact that he would be crucified on a tree. And again, crucified? Roman, it didn't say crucified. Nailed to a tree. The New Testament word for crucify is stavro'o, which means to be impaled on a stake. So stavro'o is the main verb in the New Testament, but there are a couple of different verbs, some related, some not, in Greek as well as in Latin. And while in earlier periods they primarily referred to impalement, that was generally for the display of an already deceased body rather than for punishment. But within a couple of centuries of the New Testament, these words are being used to refer to a wide variety of different suspension events. Uh, Anti-mortem, post-mortem for display, uh, for punishment, for execution. It could be body parts. It could be a whole body. There could be nails involved. It could be impalement. There could be ropes involved. There are a lot of different ways that these words are used. And uh, Gunnar Samuelson's 2011 book on crucifixion, I think, does the best job of discussing just how many different types of punishment, display, execution this could refer to. We don't have enough data to say for sure that it definitely was or definitely was not any given type of suspension event. There was no tree-shaped, T-shaped crucifixion in the first century Rome. That came later. In fact, there was no cross symbol in early Christianity until about the sixth century. Before that, it was a fish symbol and uh, the shepherd staff. The whole idea of this T-shaped tree came from pagan mythology centuries later. So this is inaccurate. I'm unaware of any data that indicate that Christians appropriated a T-shaped cross symbol from pagan symbolism around the 6th century CE. It was certainly in use prior to that. We can go back to the year 200 CE for the second earliest artistic depiction of crucifixion of any kind that is known, and that's known as the Alexamenos Graffito, which was executed probably by an enslaved pupil or colleague of a Christian named Alexamenos, and it depicts Alexamenos bowing before someone who is crucified on a T-shaped cross who has the head of an ass, and the inscription says Alexamenos worships God or his God. And the earliest depiction of crucifixion that is known is not a Christian one, but it comes from 60 to 100 years before that, the first quarter to the first half of the second century CE. We have what's known as the Puteoli Graffito, which similarly shows someone crucified with their arms outstretched on a T-shaped cross. And there is an inscription associated with that that identifies this unfortunate person as Alchimila. So the two earliest depictions we have of any type of crucifixion come from within two centuries of Jesus' crucifixion. The earlier is not associated with Christianity at all, as near as we can tell. The other is definitely associated with Christianity. But regarding Jesus' own crucifixion, sometime around 30 CE at the hands of the Romans, we don't really have enough data to say for sure whether it was or was not a T-shaped cross.